my clutch is slipping horrendously under boost. So it's done and today is the start of putting a new clutch in the truck. So I got, it's here in the box. I got a stage two eBay clutch just because it was cheap. Oh, you can hear in the background, we've got several people here today. Anthony's here, Andrew's here, and also my buddy Dylan is here. Hey. So I don't know if anyone else is gonna show up or not, uh, but the idea is that we can all kind of work together and pull the transmission out of this, throw the clutch on. We're literally, it, there's so much more you should do if you're pulling the transmission out, like rear main seal and like inspect your flywheel and get it machined or replaced. Um, the carrier bearing is probably is, is not in great shape. All that stuff should be done, um, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to pull the old clutch off and put the new clutch on because it's a cheap clutch. I don't care. I just want to drive and it should be fine. The big boot goes on over. over. This goes underneath the carpet and it um, clamps the boot and the second boot down and it's super sharp rich and i both cut our fingers a little bit so we got matching band-aids both on the same hand um but there was uh yeah there's one two three four five six six screws i believe and then possibly like a rivet i wasn't sure i didn't do that one that uh popped it out but just be careful put on gloves or something or put band-aids on your hands before you start messing with this because this lip right there is very sharp. So, note self. I don't know if they already did it or not, or if you guys heard it before, but somewhere underneath there, uh, they have marked where the drive shaft is so it's in line, so it doesn't get um, off-weighted, off-centered type thing. That's a little weight there. Um, there's a mark. I think he said it towards the rear diff. Uh, that's just so you, we don't, your John doesn't get, uh, Bad drive hey, shaft wobble. It's gonna be my band name. They're down there. I oh, believe yeah. take in the drive <laughs> shaft. I've had this off, off of, had of the, the, the diff. Don't me Different from last time. What size is that? It's supposed to be. The size. Preferably one that fits. Two mixers, we gotta pull that apart. Ooh, where, where is that code? Ooh. <laughs> 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 Shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Not the freaking Scooby-Doo. Alright, several hours later, this thing's out. And looks like not even that big but it's a real tight fit to get one of these out so you can see where I kind of drug it out from under here so man there's the back of the old KA on a hole in the floor back to the drive shaft which is just kind of hanging and the carrier bearing that's in pretty bad shape but yeah so Next is get that clutch off of there and just take a look at things. Make sure it seems okay. And put the new clutch in. And then wrestle that back in again. Went ahead and took the clutch and pressure plate off. And uh, you can see, I'll get in here. She's done. Absolutely was definitely the clutch slipping that I was feeling. <laughs> it's a bit rattly. Yeah, it's it's done. So, yes, transmission is out. I think I touched on briefly yesterday, and if I did, I'll cut up the stuff that I'm repeating. Drive shaft back there, four bolts. That end comes down. The center support carrier bearing gets unbolted. You can leave your drive shaft together. At that point, you can then slide your drive drive shaft out from the back of the transmission with the drift tray, because it's gonna start losing fluid. Um, you honestly might as well drain the transmission first before you even pull the tail shaft out. 
Um, okay, so yeah, fluid. And then plugs on the transmission. This one, there's a couple more that attach to it. This one, there's this one, which is you have to get to from inside of the engine bay. Inside the truck, the shifter boot and the entire shifter has to come off. So it looks like that. These bolts for the engine mount, which are the ones you access from up underneath there. Just those ones and then obviously the corner ones when you're ready to start dropping. We took the starter out. Yeah. That I believe is it. Bell housing bolts, obviously, transmission comes out. I also spent some time and got the old pilot bushing out. So the new one can go in, new clutch, new pressure plate. I'm not resurfacing the flywheel because I just want the truck back together to drive for this weekend and for the rest of this fall uh, before winter hits. And then once winter comes, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and probably pull this out again and do this more correctly. Probably put a new carrier bearing in and get the flywheel either resurfaced or replaced. Uh, when I do that, I'll of course do the rear main seal because I'm sure that leaks at least a little. I'm just kind of ignoring it. So yeah, at this point, I'm going to bolt the new clutch back on, I think. So yeah, let's get into that. That sounds like Tony's truck. I was right. It is much quieter now that we got the exhaust put on it, but still recognizable. I guess I should say he's got exhaust put on it. We didn't do it. We had a shop do it. Pass that chamfer. Now I'd be sure that it's good. Yeah. But it really feels like it's just like hit a wall. Right. It kind of sounds like it's bottoming out. Yeah, I don't know if maybe my socket's bottoming. It shouldn't be. This socket's slightly smaller. Yeah. But it's not bottoming, so. I don't know. We're just going to leave it there, I think. If we have an issue, then that'll be a thing to check, but I don't think we will. Yeah, because... is the right word. They're dowels is what they are. Mm. Okay, that's two of them lined up. That's got it. Gotta be. If it wasn't, it is now. <laughs> yeah, it is. You're scratching the paint. Yep. <laughs> I do have rubber mounts. You need but, a little uh, dead blow hammer. I do need a dead blow hammer. I was just saying, I need like a dead blow hammer. I need like a plastic face hammer. Yeah, like nylon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, pretty big update. We got the transmission back in. Yes, I was going to film some of this and I didn't. Say hello to Tony's boot. So yeah, there's the transmission, she's back in. Um, it's only held in with two bell housing bolts right now, but the cross member is in. Uh, it's not 100% tightened. That's good. We're gonna struggle some more now. Get the starter put back in, the last two bell housing bolts. Um, and then it's time to Hook the rear end of the drive shaft back up and carrier bearing. Yeah, carrier bearing, which is kind of a nightmare. Fluid back in it. Shifter reassembled inside. Did I say starter back in? Yes, you did. So then I think that'll be it after that. Yeah. Oh, and that little crank sensor needs to go oh, back yeah. in the top, which is why there's this weird little cover that covers that crank sensor. 
Anyway, progress. Okay, so two of the hardest bolts on the bell housing to get to are the top ones. And I saw on forums and stuff online, people saying you need to use swivel sockets to get them out. That's not true. The easiest and best way to do it is simply like this. You just need an offset, offset box wrench, standard wrench. This is just the one out of my DeWalt kit, 14 mil, and come to the top of the engine bay and you can hook that thing right on there. And that, I mean, that's gonna give you plenty of leverage. And if you needed more, I mean, you can obviously hook another one right on there and it just shoots, you know, right out the top here. So I'm tightening this one up now. And uh, yeah, it occurred to me when I was putting this back together, I was like, I bet I could reach that with a wrench. And then it occurred to me, I bet I could reach that with a wrench from the top. And yeah, you can reach both of them. I think the one on the other side may be easier to reach with the wrench, but from below, that's how I got that one tight. But uh, yeah, we had a heck of a time getting those out and it definitely didn't, did not need to be that hard. So if you learn anything from this, yeah, just remember that. Oh, and also my plan for this, because it's split right here, um, and this should, there's a groove, groove right there that that should sit into. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is probably going to cut the bottom of this off and just push that onto there and then get a hose clamp and just clamp that on there. So it's the best I got for now. Here's the repaired shift boot. I uh, put a little RTV right there. It kind of got everywhere, but it doesn't matter. There's a little hole there. And I figure that'll seal up and cover it most of the way. You can see that's the rest of the lower half. I just cut it off, clamped it right there. It's got full range of motion. Put another clamp there to uh, stop it from sliding, keep it in one place. And yeah, so that'll do just fine. Okay, so I got everything back together in the truck. Um, mostly back together. Yeah, everything's back together. We're gonna test this thing. Obviously it started, it's running, neutral works. Uh, we did the testing with Anthony before, so everything's good. I will say, holy cow, is that a way different clutch pedal. I mean, I know they say going to a stage three is pretty major. This is supposed to be a stage two. I mean, whatever this eBay's brand, eBay brand's version of stage two is, but like, all right, so let's, I mean, it's instant, and I'm, oh, I just squealed the tires in reverse because I'm so not used to this clutch. Okay. Wow, that, ooh, that's the, yeah, it's a little, she's a little low. This thing is insane. I'm probably gonna stall this thing. Like, I'm having to put so much pressure on my foot. Oh my gosh. That is gonna take some getting used to. Well, the good news is, is the truck drives. That's a wrap on the clutch job for the hard body today. I just wanted to kind of go over a recap of kind of everything we did. If you are clicking on this video because you need to know how the transmission and clutch job goes on a hard body, um, or if you're, you know, so you can just skip to here and I'll give my summary, uh, but also just for anyone in general who wants to know what was going on. So. I purchased for my 96 truck a clutch kit that was listed as for 95 and previous. 
that included the pressure plate, the actual clutch, and the throwout bearing. I used all three pieces and it all worked just fine. So don't know why it's different part numbers, but it works just fine. As far as taking the transmission out of the truck to do the clutch job, obviously it needs to be jacked up as high as you can get it to give yourself space so you can get your transmission out from underneath the truck. You're gonna need to drain fluid out of the transmission. Um, keeping in mind, you need to be using Redline MT90, uh, pretty much the only thing I would have ever heard recommended and pretty much the only thing you should use because it is actually a GL4 high performance. So you need to get that. Uh, they sell it on Amazon, that's where I buy it. It's not cheap. So your fluid has to come out. If you're not planning on changing that fluid, collect it in a clean container, inspect it and make sure you wanna put it back in. Um, but yeah, get yourself some of that. Fluid out, drive shaft off, drive shaft out of the way, as long as it's, you know, out, it doesn't have to come all the way out of the truck, but just out of the tail shaft of the transmission. Starter needs to come off and then it could just kind of hang there. The slave cylinder, of course, needs to come off. It can also just hang there to the side. The shifter from the inside needs to come out. You can just take, you can either take the whole shifter plate off, the one, two, three, four, five, six bolts off the whole thing out, or you can just, you can take the boot off and then you can take that C-clip out and then pull the shifter arm out. So that's gotta come out. The bell housing bolts, I will say, People say online, you need to use a swivel socket from the in, from underneath and up in there and get swivel sockets to get those two top bolts out. You don't have to do that. Just get your standard wrench, open end box wrench. Uh, I like, my ones have the slight offset, like the slight bend on the end. Those are perfect because you can go right in from the top and turn those out, or you can go underneath actually and put your wrench on there and turn those out. That's how I, that's definitely the easiest way to get to those bolts. The other bolts aren't so bad. Um, that same open-ended and box-end wrench, especially if you have a shorter one in 14 mil, you need for the starter, the top starter bolt, you need for that. So that's the trick on that. But yeah, that's the main thing. Those are the main things, obviously, that, that it takes to get the transmission out. And once you do that, it's the cross-member bolts, four on the ends, and then two in the middle that go into the transmission. Uh, you get those off. That cross member comes out of the way, and then the transmission can go back, and then it can go down, can go out. And then the same way going back in, we use uh, both times, like in and out, we had two people, one on each side, plus the jack, uh, the jack just to kind of hold and help where we need to, but most of it was just us kind of tilted up, set it on the member, bring it over, um, and then thing back together. Honestly, it went pretty well. So I don't have any, Nothing major went wrong, but it certainly wasn't easy. Those bolts were definitely a pain, especially when I didn't realize you could just use a wrench because it took me messing around with it to figure out that you had to do that or that you could do that. So that is about it on the clutch job. I wanna say it took me like 12-ish hours, maybe more, uh, cause I had never done one before and yeah, not knowing. Now that I know, I'm sure it would go quicker, but that's just how anything goes. Um, and that was with me having help. And I really do think you need help to get that transmission out. It definitely make things easier. Unless you have like a transmission jack that, you know, holds it where you need it with angles and stuff. That would help. So yeah, I want to give a huge thank you to Andrew, Anthony, and Dylan for coming and hanging out and helping me a whole bunch. Uh, getting the transmission in and out. Uh, getting bolts undone. Getting connectors undone and on just hanging out in general so I don't just lose my mind in here for hours working by myself. So huge shout out to those guys and thank you to them. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully if you were looking for some information on the clutch job, you got some. And if you're just interested in what I'm doing and how the truck's doing, hopefully this uh, was interesting to you as well. So I'll definitely have more content coming for you later. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go to bed. See ya.